Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Hello and welcome to today's webinar on a walk in their shoes using the Real Care Geriatric Simulator to teach geriatric sensitivity. Today we'll take a high level look at the geriatric experience featuring the Geriatric Simulator Sensitivity Suit, the need in the Health Occupations Pathway, the curriculum, and other additional resources available to you. Gerontology is a vast field that includes the study of various biological, physical, and mental changes in older people. Geriatrics is mainly concerned with healthcare and providing medical assistance to the aging population, and as such, is also considered a subfield of gerontology. Due to the rapidly increasing number of elderly people in the United States and around the world, numerous opportunities are arising for professionals in geriatrics and gerontology. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of elderly people in the United States will be at its highest over the next decade and will continue to grow. This will ensure a sustained growth in careers in geriatrics and gerontology, which are expected to increase by 20% through the year 2020. Now, again, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, many of the occupations projected to have the largest job growth involve geriatric patients. Occupations such as personal care aides, RNs, home health aides, nursing assistants, and so forth have enormous potential. So if you look closer at this list of the top 10 skills you need for working in a nursing home, most of them involve direct patient care. We believe that better care will be provided when workers are sensitive to what the patients are going through. Compassion and understanding are key to providing care for geriatric patients. If you walk in the shoes of an older adult, you're much likelier to provide more appropriate care because you'll understand the challenges that daily tasks can be. Now, according to a recent study at Julius Maximilian University of Würzburg on the effectiveness of age simulation, you'll see that 83% of participants were able, able to empathize with um, life in old age very well after participating in an age simulation similar to our geriatric suit. And nearly all of them at 95% of the participants had a better understanding of physical conditions of aging after participating in a simulation event. With that, we'll take a closer look at the Real Care Geriatric Simulator Sensitivity Suit and the complete curriculum to help participants understand the common physical effects of aging. Now, the parts of this program include one geriatric weight vest, a cervical collar, four wrist weights, two elbow restraints, two ankle weights, two knee restraints, a set of gloves, one storage case, a smaller case for a set of six visual impairment glasses, and a walker. There's also online access to the geriatric experience curriculum. And of course, it all comes with a one-year limited warranty. Now, the geriatric simulator enables participants who put it on to experience many common physical conditions of aging. Some of these will include visual impairment. Now, you'll have six different visual conditions to choose from in the simulation, ranging from glaucoma to macular degeneration. You'll have restricted range of motion. As you put on the various restraints, you'll find that that will happen. The decreased mobility will happen as you put the weights on your ankles and your wrists. Stooped posture will happen as you put on the weight vest and it weighs you down. You'll feel a loss of sensation in your hands as you put on the gloves and you lose that tactile sensation. The joint stiffness again will happen through, through the restraints. You'll have a loss of strength and a general fatigue as you wear it longer due to the weight vest and the weights. And of course, you'll have that change in body image and definitely a decreased sense of balance. And what um, will enhance that is all of the different visual impairment glasses. When you have that on, in addition to all of the pieces of the suit, you'll even get a sense of uh, confusion as well. So the geriatric simulator, we feel is very easy to put on. And in the, um, in the package, you'll get a quick start guide, as you see on the screen here, and it will show you the 10 steps to putting it on. So basically, you put on the weights, the vest, the restrictors, um, all in the recommended order that you'll see in the quick start guide. You'll choose your glasses, you'll adjust the walker and off you go. So right now, I'm going to um, go to video mode and we're gonna show um, Andre who suited up with the suit so you can see all of the pieces um, in action today. So here we are. 
and you'll see that Andre is wearing our geriatric simulation sensitivity suit. He's got all of the different parts and pieces on from the visual stimulation glasses to some of the restraints, both at the neck, the elbow, and the knee. He's wearing that weight vest that's a one size fits all. And Andre, if you'll turn around, you'll see that, that it, how it looks in the back. And again, if you'll turn around to the front, it, it um, encloses by uh, adjustable Velcro, so it's one size fits most. And again, you've got the, the um, wrist weights, and it comes with um, two for each hand. So that makes it more adjustable for various sizes of individuals. If you've got um, a smaller, uh, thinner, um, maybe young, young ladies trying it on, you might just choose to use one of the wrist weights. Or for the gentleman, you might wish to use two as Andre has on. He's also got his ankle weights on below. And then he's got his, his gloves on, which he'll also use in some of the activities um, to do things like um, open a pill bottle or do some um, things like a zipper, buttons, getting dressed, putting on a jacket, those daily tasks that can be uh, so challenging when you've got the different physical conditions. So this is basically how it looks once you follow the 10 steps to putting it on. And again, you've got the walker in the background that comes with it and you, it's adjustable by height. So once you're all suited up and you've got the walker, then you can just participate in the lessons found in the curriculum. Thanks, Andre. And now we'll go to a video clip where you can actually um, see it a little bit in action. If you go on our, on our website, on the product page for the geriatric suit, you will see a three minute video that you can go on and watch more of it. So I've got um, a clip that we're just going to watch a few seconds, and you can see that um, Andre's fully suited up here, and he's using the walker, and he's showing the challenge that it presents to just simply go up a few stairs and open a door and how that manifests itself. You can see that it adds a layer of complexity as you have to figure out how you're going to go up the steps with that walker and also with that restricted range of motion the mobility is also restricted, and of course, your eyesight doesn't quite work the same either. So that's just a very short clip, but you can watch the thing in its entirety on our website at realityworks.com. So now let's talk about um, how the geriatric simulator can be used, and it can be used in many different settings. Um, in the high school, you can use it in health occupations courses because it can provide hands-on experiential learning to make the lesson memorable. Post-secondary courses in health uh, care, such as nursing, could also find it helpful. CNA training courses taught in high schools, community college, or any on-site in nursing homes could also use this as a learning tool. Um, In-service training in nursing homes and assisted living facilities would find this a great option. We know that some states mandate so many hours per year of continuing um, education um, hours for um, nursing home and assisted living facility staff, and this would be a great standalone program that could be used for training over and over. Um, public health organizations and community education groups could also use this as a way to engage the community or general public to learn more about those important geriatric issues. The curriculum that comes with the geriatric simulator includes nine lessons, a total of nine to 13 hours of teaching time if you taught everything. Some of the lesson topics include a geriatrics and gerontology career exploration, a visual impairment lesson, declining in mobility due to aging, the impact of aging on bones and joints, hearing loss, cognitive changes with aging, the geriatric experience, and then amazing aging. So these lessons actively integrate the use of the geriatric simulator into the lessons. And the curriculum is aligned to the national facts education standards, common core state standards, common career technical core, and the national health education standards. So let's take a look at a few best practices. Number one, the group experience. We believe that when a group of students experience the exercise together, it enriches the conversation with being more people being able to compare how each is feeling. Many of the lessons include a series of tasks to perform with various parts of the simulator on, including an entirely immersive experience in lesson seven. Some of the tasks will include tying your shoes, using a cell phone, reading a newspaper, opening a door, putting on a jacket, combing your hair, putting on a belt. And we recommend, if possible, to have groups of students wear it at the same time. Um, again, those groups enrich the experience, making the discussion so much deeper as students experience the effects at the same time. 
Another best practice is 20 to 60 minutes. It is recommended to wear this for a minimum of 20 minutes during class time to get the full experience of what being a geriatric patient feels like. If you have multiple simulators, it's highly encouraged to extend that time even longer. While it's not recommended to send this home with students for the at-home experience, some instructors do have students use it longer than an hour. For example, some instructors will use this as an extra credit opportunity, allowing students to wear it during school hours for additional time and then journaling about their experience. Now, there are again a total of nine lessons in the geriatric experience curriculum on a wide variety of topics. And again, the geriatric simulator is integrated into most of the lessons. Now, each of the lessons follows the same format and the curriculum culminates in lesson seven with that fully immersive geriatric experience when the participant will wear the entire suit. There are slide presentations and pre and post assessments included as well. Let's take a closer look at a few of the lessons and sample activities in those lessons. Lesson number one is exploring geriatrics and gerontology and they explore a variety of career opportunities by doing a research project where they choose one related career and they find key information such as educational requirements, average starting salary, typical duties, the occupational outlook, needed skills, et cetera. And then this information is shared with the class in a five minute presentation, thus exposing students to a wide variety of occupations to choose from in the geriatrics area. Lesson two on visual impairment. And this will simulate six different common conditions older adults may face. Some of these are glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, retinal detachment, and retinitis pigmentosa. About 65% of people who are visually impaired are over 50 years of age, and 82% of people living with blindness are age 50 and above. Participants will learn about each of the different conditions and then try on each of the visual impairment glasses and then try a series of daily tasks. They record their thoughts on how this would impact their daily life as an older adult. Now lesson seven, again, is that fully immersive experience and this lesson begins with an empathy self-assessment. Participants will use this as a tool to reflect on how empathetic they are and identify areas they wish to improve upon. Participants then participate in a full experience by putting the geriatric suit on. They will work in pairs to assist um, putting it on each other and then completing all of the tasks on the list. Some of these will include opening a pill bottle, signing their name with a pen, buttoning a shirt, pouring a glass of water from a pitcher, trying to pick up five coins, perhaps tying their shoes, combing their hair, putting on a belt, and many more things. Participants will finish the lesson with a reflection experience on how this simulation has changed the way they see and feel about older adults. They'll choose a statement from the lesson about being an empathetic caregiver, and they'll then create a poster, an essay, or some type of written reflection project. Now, there are many, many creative ways you could use this geriatric simulator to enrich your program or to take the experience one step further. Here are a few ideas from innovative instructors. There are many activities in the curriculum that align to the common core state standards for English language arts. You can use these to teach important research, writing, and speaking skills. You can work with your language arts colleagues on interdisciplinary units. Health occupations and facts teachers can also use the geriatric simulation experience to teach caregiving sensitivity across the lifespan and in related occupations. We have heard that several instructors um, have gone on field trips, taken to local nursing homes and assisted living facilities for a close up look and experience with geriatric care. Students wear the geriatric simulator prior to the field trip to gain that sensitivity and empathy prior to the field trip. Students can ask the patients about their life experiences as well as the caregivers to see what a day in the life of an older person and a caregiver is like. Journaling is an excellent way for students to reflect on any experience. One instructor gives the students the geriatric simulator to wear off and on for several days and has them journal during each day of the experience to document what they are thinking and feeling. While we do not recommend necessarily wearing it for multiple days, you could have students go through the simulation and physical tasks and have them journal about the experience. 
and a rubric is included in the curriculum for your convenience. Um, not just writing um, by journaling, but you could also have them do some video journaling as well. Now, if you're looking for some ideas for purchasing additional geriatric simulators or for funding your first one, here are a few things to consider. Um, you might find a local nursing home or assisted living facility willing to fund the purchase or sponsor one for your school. Um, a local education or medical foundation may also be a great source um, to go to to support your program. Um, we've also had customers go to um, community groups like JC's, Elks, Rotary Lions, Kiwanis, things of that nature to help fund a purchase. Sometimes they look for um, community um, projects such as that. Such as that. Um, we've had PTOs look for ways to help support instructional initiatives in the classroom. You could also partner with a local public health or social service organization who might be willing to purchase this as a resource to be shared among multiple programs. Uh, don't forget that Perkins funding can also be used for this type of resource. Um, you can also go to our, the funding center on our website and um, you can find a few ideas there. We do have a grant search tool that you can use. Um, crowdfunding is also one of the newest ways to raise money on the internet. And if you haven't tried it, here's four places you might wanna go. There's one called Adopt a Classroom. This location enables donors to choose any classroom at any school of their choosing to donate to or to partner with the organization to select a classroom. There's one called Insight Ed, I-N-C-I-T-E-D. This education specific crowdfunding site was created by two Oregon English teachers to help educators raise money for their classrooms. There's one called Crowdfund EDU. This allows users to uh, raise funds for anything related to education. And of course, the popular one, Donors Choose, which was founded back in 2000 by a Bronx social teacher, a social studies teacher. And um, we found that the Donors Choose um, was crowdfunding education before crowdfunding was even a recognized term. And that site did report that 70% of projects um, hosted are actually successful. So those are just a few ideas to help in your fundraising activities um, if you're looking for that type of information. So just again, to recap about the geriatric simulator, um, the, the whole kit uh, comes with everything you see on the screen, including the walker, um, all of the, the suit components, the glasses uh, case and kit, and also a uh, handy storage case as well. Um, you can purchase this for $24.99 on our website at realityworks.com, or you can feel free to call and place your order as well. Now there are some additional resources for career success that we'd like to point out to you today. Our first one is our RealityWorks blog. If you go to our website at realityworks.com backslash blog, you'll find um, information um, on products, on success stories from our customers, on timely information um, in the market. Just a great place to go to get updated information on all sorts of things um, relating to um, geriatric care along with um, infant care and anything um, college and career ready or CTE related. We also have a presence on Facebook, uh, facebook.com backslash realityworksinc. You can go there to see any recent postings. And then we have also a free employability skills curricula. It's a six lesson curricula that you can go to at the website on the screen. So just a few things we wanted to point out to you today that you might, might find helpful um, as a resource for your program. Um, at this point, we would open it up for any questions you might have, and I'm going to turn it over to Samantha. Yes, again, just want to remind you, if you have any questions for Denise um, in regards to this webinar, you can type those right into the chat feature on the lower part of your screen, and we can answer those for you now. Additionally, if um, you have questions that come up after this webinar, feel free to visit our website at realityworks.com and look for information and you can email questions in or else you can email information at realityworks.com as well. Uh, thank you, Samantha. And I see that at this point, we have no questions from the audience today. So with that, we will wrap up today's webinar. Um, please be aware that this has been recorded and this um, webinar in its entirety will be posted on our, the product support part of our website for your viewing um, at any time that's convenient for you. Thank you for participating today. We hope you found it very helpful.